Hello ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to dive right into a pool full of shit? No? Well, too bad. We're going right into it. We're not even going to put on protective gear. We're going to read a shit tier article from a mediocre news site known as The Guardian. It's titled, Memo to White America. The NFL fight is about police brutality, not the flag. Firstly, this article, just by the headline, seems a tad bit racist. As if only white people care about the American flag. I feel insulted. Not only that, if it's not about the flag, then why kneel down during the national anthem? Why not actually talk about police brutality? Probably because most of these activists don't actually understand what the hell they are even protesting. Also, once more, I'd like to talk about the race baiting in the headline. Do you genuinely think white people don't face police who abuse their power? I was 23 years old in April of 1992 when a Simi Valley jury infamously acquitted the four officers charged with the vicious, unknowingly videotaped beating of Rodney King. I was a nobody, just an editorial assistant at the Oakland Tribune attending San Francisco State University, but I had thoughts. Well, congratulations, you had thoughts. So did most of America. Most people I know find it disgusting that those police officers got away with what they got away with. Police officers are employees of the state, and we had an instance where the state had to determine whether or not state employees would be charged and punished. Do you think the outcome is going to be more than half? What do you think the outcome is going to be more than half the time? Also, I was born around the O.J. Simpson trial where O.J. Simpson was acquitted. I mean, we can play this game all day. I believed that despite the national outrage, which was followed by the worst rioting in the history of the nation, an acquittal was the only possible outcome for an America that, in the famous phrase of Martin Luther King Jr., consistently chose order over justice. To acknowledge the guilt of the officers in a court of law. I remember writing, what have required the white mainstream to acknowledge the historical black grievance of police brutality, which it has never done. Secondarily, I would have also suggested to acknowledge that police were not only capable of acting abhorrently, but actually did so routinely. White society, I wrote, was not ready to acknowledge either. I concluded the leap was too great. What universe are you living in? Are you living in this fantasy society where police just walk up to black people and abuse them? In your world, have we never talked about slavery and the civil rights movement? I am 21 years old. And you want to know what I've learned about extensively throughout all of elementary school? All the way up until I graduated? I was constantly and consistently taught about American slavery in nearly every single grade since the first grade. I was consistently taught about the civil rights movement. The stain of racism in America's history has never been ignored. It's something that is constantly talked about, hence why you're able to publish this article. Please let me know what universe you are living in. Mary Ellen Butler, the Tribune op-ed editor, did not seem to appreciate what she considered a radical opinion, especially coming from a college student whose job was to open mail and retrieve the afternoon papers. She stripped the story of its life, then published it, not as a bold thought piece by a young reporter with thoughts, but as a letter to the editor, just some random dude at a typewriter. It was an insult, a pat on the head to go back to the little kid's table. Well, I can't specifically comment comment about what you're saying, considering this is entirely anecdotal, but I will say that her response is not really an indication of America's media attitude at that time. It's more or less just a projection of her personal attitudes. 26 years later, the writer is old, but the issue remains. The mainstream continues to be confronted with abhorrent police behavior, from Stephen Clark being shot and killed by police in his grandmother's backyard in Sacramento, to Daniel Shaver being shot at point-blank range while on the floor pleading for his life by police in Mesa, Arizona. The same department that caught on video security footage last week six of its officers beating an unarmed suspect near an elevator. For the last four years, the youth have blocked traffic on freeways and at airports. 
The ball players have knelt, worn t-shirts, raised fists, been blackballed, yet the discussion from the president to NFL owners is centered not on the latest horrifying YouTube dashcam footage, but on the American flag. Okay, let's make one thing clear. Have, have you recently heard about the white man who was tased by police even though he is following orders? Also, yes, because the NFL's form of protest is insulting to those who are patriotically American. Not only that, but your activists are incapable of conveying what it is they are upset about. Newsflash, when you kneel during the national anthem, an American custom and celebration of American culture, you will tend to piss people off, even if you have a point. It's pretty clear why people, including the president, are talking about the American flag. Not only that, no one will listen to you when you impede on their right to fucking travel. You are inconveniencing the lives of working class people who view time as a valuable commodity. And I know the common rebuttal to that, they will say something like, well, they're just showing you what it feels like to be inconvenienced because that's what the black community goes through every day. And to that I would say, what an over-exaggerated claim to make. Most black people in America, especially the ones that don't live in slums, are just like the rest of working class America. Or as you call it, white America. They're the people that you are blocking in traffic. Not only that, but I bet you that most of the people blocking traffic are privileged in the same manner that they accuse white people of being. To jump back to the beginning of that paragraph, the media constantly talks about police brutality. Police brutality is in the top five topics that the media can't wait to talk about because it boosts their ratings. Number one being mass shootings. Somewhere in between number two and five is sexual assault accusations, Donald Trump, celebrity gossip, and police brutality. The ones who see the stubborn, deliberate misdirection away from police and toward the flag scream futilely to the heavens and argue on social media so often you can practically hear them in your sleep. They aren't protesting the flag, they ask the question, how did this go from police brutality to being about the flag? While already knowing the answer for the white mainstream, it never left being about the flag. You really are a moron, aren't you? It's about the flag because these players made it about the flag. In framing the heritage, I saw black athletes shaped by a particular hierarchy. White owners, white coaches, white season ticket buyers, white media, black players. This is the structure of American sports. It is the framework through which American sports is packaged, marketed, reported, and sold to the public. Each movement of the black player, and especially today's revival of black player protest, is filtered through the lens of these four entities above him. And none, especially the media in what has been spectacularly epic journalistic fail, has ever had the courage to filter black protest through the lens of the black player grievance because, like the Simi Valley jury 26 years ago, it would require the white mainstream to relinquish its historical advantages. What the actual fuck are you talking about? None of what he just said flowed logically from what he was previously saying. Are you really going to suggest black athletes are victims? or somehow oppressed on a social hierarchy? Are you really going to pull that bullshit? I'm incredibly sorry that you think NFL athletes with an average salary of 21 million are somehow oppressed because they are at the bottom of a sports totem pole. Secondly, how does white media play into sports? Have you heard of Michael Smith, Steven Smith, Jalen Rose, Mike Teresa, State Sage Steele, Michael Strahan, white owners and white coaches? How is that relevant to anything? How the hell is anything that you said relevant? Why in the world did I just legitimize this argument? White media has given these black players attention. Colin Kaepernick had a press conference to talk about his ideas. There's no way to misinterpret what he said. Viewing Colin Kaepernick's decision to risk his career through the lens of Tamir Rice's dead 12-year-old body would mean being unprotected from the luxury position of being able to tell people how to feel, of dictating what is appropriate and what is not. It would require viewing police through the lens of the despised, not as a member of the protected majority class for whom dialing 911 poses no risk but as a common sense thing to do. Colin 
the police for anyone is a common sense thing to do, you utter moron. Do you think your rhetoric is helpful for black people? Do you think it serves the black community to make them afraid of the police? Also, while it's sad that Tamir Rice was shot, you shoot yourself in the foot when you assume that this is a racialized killing. Tamir Rice, the poor soul that was lost, aimed a realistic looking toy gun at the police. Again, not just any toy gun, but an airsoft gun without the orange plastic tip, which looks similar to a real firearm. Also, the officer was responding to a call that was made, which reported that a gun might have been present. From 2014 to 2016, over 80 people were shot for holding toy guns. And guess what? More than 50% of those people were white. Viewing Eric Reed's decision to kneel before every game during a free agent season, when the President of the United States has referred to people like him as SOBs, who maybe shouldn't be in the country, through the lens of police shooting and killing Alton Sterling for selling CDs, would require leagues to maybe rethink the dozens of law enforcement appreciation nights peppered across the home schedules of every team in every sport. It would also require Nike to maybe rethink those post 9-11 apparel discounts it offers military and law enforcement. This is called straw manning someone's position. Donald Trump didn't call the players sons of bitches because they were speaking out against police brutality. He was calling them sons of bitches for disrespecting the flag. Let's talk about Alton Sterling and this author's rhetoric. It is incredibly dishonest to say that he was shot for selling CDs. He was being arrested because a phone call was made to the police about Alton waving and threatening someone with a gun while selling CDs. After Alton was shot, the officers retrieved a loaded 38 caliber revolver from Sterling's front pants pocket. If you're going to talk about important issues, be honest. Otherwise, don't write an article at all. Because at this point, you are lying. Before I move on, if you'd just be honest, when mentioning these tragic stories, you'd be better off. Because in the case of Alton, his story is unfortunate enough without the lies. Because through video evidence and eyewitness testimony, the police were being over aggressive. But you ruined any chance of sympathy you may have had by lying. And why should Nike rethink its apparel discounts? that it offers military and law enforcement because the actions of certain police officers because of the laws that both political parties support are you really going to paint all police officers with a vastly reductionist worldview you have acquired because some cops use excessive force fine then every single black person is a violent criminal because black people commit more than half of all violent crime even though i would never say that and mean it literally because i don't blame an entire demographic for the actions actions of individuals like you do the mainstream machine would not expose itself to such vulnerability and the alternative is to focus on the flag the flag is all they know it provides them enormous cover and power it means they never have to listen it allows each of the four entities above the black player to feel in control of the narrative of the why of it all of the conversation and moral high ground. There are other ways to protest. It allows the powerful, by which I mean to say the majority, to remain in the comfortable position of viewing protest through the lens of itself of what offends it. It is to reveal that the white media, when its members go home and take their kids, whose t-ball team is coached by the neighbor dad who happens to be a cop, has more in common power than the powerless. Isn't it amazing? The right wing gets accused of conspiracy theories all the time. Yet Howard Bryant, the author of this article, perpetuates a conspiracy theory in this article. He lives in this fantasy land where mainstream media doesn't talk about police brutality. He lives in this fantasy land where no black people are cops. He lives in this fantasy land where no white people are shot by the police. He lives in this fantasy land as if police officers outside of their job are normal people. To cover an issue through the lens of the oppressor, whether the issue is gender from a male perspective, class from a wealth perspective, race from a white perspective, is to also be the oppressor. The flag even allows the majority to reverse roles and be the aggrieved. For framing black grievance as a protest against the flag means they and not the dead black citizens are the ones who act are actually under attack. They're perceiving this as a protest against the flag because that is how these players are choosing to convey their anger. 
This isn't astrophysics. This isn't rocket medicine. Nonetheless, how are black citizens under attack? Most black people, a huge majority, will never be shot by a police officer. Secondly, the number one cause for the death of black men, other than natural causes, is other black men. But you're not looking in a mirror. And you know why you want to ad address black on black violence? Because it's within the same community. Therefore, there's no oppressor. That's insane. Within this framework, even the flag itself is being disordered, both by a demagogic president and a pliant media from a symbol of ideals to an authoritarian allegiance to military and police. Black grievance can be dismissed, and if the unpatriotic kneelers don't like it, as the president has said, maybe they don't belong in the country. Again with the conspiracy theories. Being upset that kneelers are disrespecting the flag does not equate to an authoritarian allegiance to military and police. And sure, I'll grant you, to an extent a black grievance is being dismissed, which is why, which is being dismissed by black people. Why aren't black people hyper-focused on the number one killer of black people? The number one cause of death for black people is other people black people. Focusing on the anthem allows the majority to ignore reality. A policeman kicking the hell out of a family member for pure sadistic enjoyment. That is unthinkable to them and reposition unrest through the lens of the very familiar, the flag, and the police as unequivocal, un uncomplicated ally. It is to go back to Simi Valley. Viewing protest any other way would force them to reconsider themselves and their comforts that their heroes may not be so heroic after all, and that maybe justice isn't so just. Better to have an order. Better to remain in control. Okay, well, you just made it about the American flag. If you don't want the focus to be on the national anthem or the American flag, then don't make it about the national anthem or the American flag. The national anthem, the custom through which you are disrespecting, is irrelevant to what you would describe as a black person holocaust. And there is no epidemic of police just walking out and beating up black people. In a statistical reality, if you counted every single police interaction that people have within any given day, the number of police interactions that don't involve police brutality would dwarf police brutality. That's not to say there isn't a problem with police brutality. I will gladly get into that at the end of the video. Whether the filter is the white owners who create national anthem policies to be obeyed, white coaches who, with only a few exceptions, oversee black men without understanding them and supporting them, white ticket buyers and the white media who reflect and are comforted by the status quo, the majority cannot separate the flag from the police, when it comes to controlling the culture, they are the police. I don't even know how to respond to that non sequitur. It makes no sense. Plus, I think I did a good job enough, a good enough job responding to that non sequitur earlier. But I feel like I need to respond to it anyway. Because someone out there watching this might fall for this author's inane rhetoric. If it's not about the flag, then I must ask. Why are you upset that the NFL owners made policies about players standing for the flag? Again, why are you suggesting that black players are oppressed by owners, coaches, and white ticket buyers? Are you that ignorant? Who pays for the salary of these wealthy black players? The non-rich, non-millionaire, white ticket buyer. Who is responsible for creating the team that black athletes have benefited from? By benefited from, I mean given opportunity to make millions of dollars. A single entity that is responsible for lifting more black people out of poverty than welfare could imagine in even a year. Than the government could even hope to do. The owners are who are responsible for this entity or institution that lifts black players out of poverty. Who is responsible for making sure these athletes stay in tip top shape and understand the fundamentals of football so they can continue making millions of dollars? You guessed it, the white coaches. This article is incomprehensible. This article lacks continuity. You've brought up how the protest isn't about the flag. You then listed, while misrepresenting the stories, some black people who were shot by the police. You then moved on to talk about the hierarchy seen in American sports without even explaining how the protest isn't about the flag. You sho shoehorning in the hierarchy 
in American sports served no purpose to your article. If you make an argument or a statement, you need to be able to properly convey that argument. But you didn't. Articles like this make me so angry. Here's a topic that I should agree with you on. But because you're making a divergent argument, it's hard for me to show my support. I have a problem with excess government force. I have a huge problem with unjust laws. Therefore, I have a problem with the trickle-down effect of these unjust laws fused with government force. It's distressing to see anyone shot by the police, whether you're black or white. Which is a key problem that I have with this article. It's pretending as if white people aren't oppressed by the same entity black people are. We are all oppressed in some manner. Unfortunately, the culture of your demographic will affect your interactions with police. I think the police need better and updated training. I think we need to look at some of these laws that help add to the body count. Some of these laws we should look at are related to the drug war. The black community needs to look into a mirror. Conservatives need to be consistent with their ideology. Do you support limited government or are you a shill for the police no matter what? Conservatives, you can respect the military and the police and still support limited government. You can believe that people enlist in law enforcement and the military for noble reasons. But call them out when they abuse this power. Call them out when their actions aren't so noble. There's so many ways I can talk about this issue, but I'll need to save that for another video. Bottom line, let me finish with some clear and precise language. You don't need to respect the flag, you have freedom of speech. However, if you're on company time, and the company that pays you to step out on that field can fire you, if you do something they deem respectful to American culture or something that will threaten their ratings, you must then obey that company or leave. You can protest police brutality. You just need to understand it isn't race specific. Many more white people, aka the majority of the US, will be on your side if it was strictly about police brutality. Also, quit voting for Democrats. I'm not suggesting that you must vote for the Republican Party. You should just stop supporting Democrats. They are 75% of the reason why the black community suffers. Look for other options. Look at Republican candidates. Look at Libertarian candidates. Look at the Green Party. Look at the Independents or look at the Constitution Party. Find a new strategy because your last one is not working. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more content, don't forget to subscribe so you can check back and see more future videos regarding politics and culture. While you're at it, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when a new video is uploaded. Also, check out my links to my Facebook and Twitter in the description box below. Ooh.